I'm here with Tyler, who came from Burlington for his very first fan fest. His question is from Sundin. Uh, what was the hardest defender you faced? Hardest defender you ever faced? Uh, okay, yeah, there's been a, a lot of great defensemen that I've played against, but I have to say uh, Ray Bork probably played for Boston for many years and, and always played up against me when I had to play the Bruins. And I would say Scott Stevens also for the New Jersey Devils, who was a really good, tough defenseman to play against. I'll say those two. Okay, Sam, have you got somebody? Yep, I met yep. Ryan right here, and he has a question for Matt. Hey, Matt, uh, hands down, you're my favorite player. Just wondered, what was the most favorite memory you've had playing with the Leafs in your career? Well, I, I would say definitely the two runs that we had into the conference finals uh, against Carolina and against Buffalo. And, you know, we had a lot of playoff runs, but those two sticks out as the great memories when you play, you know, end of May and, and into the first week of June and, and you know it's almost summer already in the city but it's still oh. hockey fever in Toronto young, those two young, um, young. playoff runs stands out as, as the best memories that I have with the Leafs for sure we're, we're organizing a few more questions here guys um, and I asked Boria and, and Matt's this um, the influx of Europeans in the National Hockey League has made our game so much better. Uh, when you, Mats were growing up, and, and Boria was really breaking new ground, how did it affect you over there and at where you were playing? Did your dream all of a sudden now encompass the National Hockey League? Oh, oh definitely. I, I think Boria and, and everybody in Sweden knows that watching hockey. And, and, uh, one of the biggest memories in, in Sweden from hockey in general is when Borja was introduced at the Maple Leaf Gardens, coming with Team Sweden, uh, and get the standing ovation, you know, coming out with the Swedish uh, uh, jersey on. That was like a big awakening, I think, for people in Sweden to realize what kind of a, a Borja paved the way for, for Swedish hockey players and re for all of the players over there realizing, hey, we all, can, we all have a chance maybe to get there if we work hard. So, Borja opened up the door for, I think, not only Swedish players, but European players in general, and, and uh, made it available, NHL, or, or a goal that is reachable and, and acceptable to have Swedes and other nationalities in the, in the league. So we really all have a lot to thank for Borja for, for taking all the beating for the rest of us coming over after. <laughs> Sam, you've got another question. All right, this question is for Matt, and it's a question that a lot of Leafs Nation is probably wondering right now, Matt, so go ahead, Arden. Hey, Matt, I've been wondering, are you going to ever join our organization again or join our front office, our all-star front office right now? Yeah, it's, if, since I retired, I've been, it's, been, it's been nice to get a, a break away from, the, from hockey at the elite level, but I've done some stuff with grassroots hockey with the Swedish national team, and... Uh, actually going to be involved with the World Cup that is coming here to Toronto and Montreal next September 2016 and be an advisor with Nicholas Lidstrom and Dan Daniel Alfredson for Team Sweden. So yeah, <laughs> you can boo him, that's no problem, Alfredson. <laughs> uh, but that's going to be fun. So I'll be involved a little bit now this, this upcoming season and uh, at the elite level of hockey as well. Lauren? All right, I'm here with Jen from Toronto. She has been a Leaf fan for many years, and she has a question for both Bora as well as Matt. Hi, guys. Uh, first, I want to thank Daryl Sittler, Sittler for noticing me with my hand up, so thank you. Um, Matt, I know you live in Sweden. How do you find the commute back and forth um, from here to Toronto, and does your family always come with you? Yeah, it's a good question. We're, I try to, for me, I, Toronto is my second home, and I, I try to come here four or five times a year. This time, I, we brought our children. They're three years, and, and we have a little boy who's 10 months old, so it's hard to travel with the whole family, especially when they're this young. So most of the time, we're not, we don't travel the whole family, and I come for a week or so and, and make it a short trip, but I try to come more often instead. So I, I, I always... Uh, We'll come back to Toronto for the rest of my life uh, on, occasion, on a regular basis. Sam? Yep. Joe, this is Jordan right here, and he has a question for his hockey hero, Matt Sundin. 
you were my favorite player ever since. What was the best goalie you liked to shoot on? What was the? Sorry, I didn't hear the question. Best, best goalie. Best, best goal? goalie that you like to shoot on. Best goaltender. The one you like to score on, I suppose. That I like to score on. Yeah. <laughs> Glenn them, Healy's not them, here, so. Uh, Brudeur was obviously. I think during my year, I was probably the best goalie out there. I, I really like, and I, I love to score on Patrick Raw actually when he was with Mon Montreal and Colorado. He was my favorite goal I'd say to score on. The um, ten point night, Daryl. Um, did you have any inkling of the record and what you were closing in on? As it was, because there was, and in fairness to me, who was so over exuberant in the pregame festivities. There was no pixel board. There was no nothing in the stands to, uh, for us as, as fans to understand what was actually transpiring that night. Well, what had happened, uh, I think the Thursday or Friday before the Saturday game, Harold Ballard made a comment in the paper. Only he could find a centerman to play with Landy McDonald and Errol Thompson. So he was obviously giving me a little shot that I wasn't carrying my weight. But anyway, we play the Bruins. It's a coast-to-coast -coast hockey night. Canada, the Canadians are on the road, so it's televised coast to coast. Uh, going into the, uh, at the end of the second period, I had seven points, and I had no idea what the record was, but our statistician came from the press box down to me in the dressing room. He said, I don't know if you know it, Daryl, but Rock Richard has eight points. He holds a record. He scored in the, in the 40s. You get another point, you tie Rock Richard's record. So that was the first indication that we were close to the record. The third period, I go out and Again, everything falls in place. For You see the highlights, the last goal, I was behind the net. I was actually trying to pass the puck out to Earl Thompson in the slot. Brad Park stuck his leg out, goes between Dave Reese's legs, and, and that's a record. But after I scored the, the record and Borey was there that night, um, I don't think I realized what I did and the impact it would have. And then as we went through, you know, after my retirement, I'd see Wayne Gretzky scoring two 220 points a year, Mario Lemieux, and I always thought one of those guys would be the guys to, to tie it or to, to beat it. Uh, Gretzky had, I think he had eight points twice, Mario Lemieux might have had eight points three times, but I'm still honored, 40 years coming up, to hold it. I was proud to do it in a Leaf uniform against Don Cherry's Boston Bruins. And, uh, and, uh, to be quite honest, I hope that record goes on for another number of years, but I was proud to hold that record. And Borey got five assists that night, so it wasn't for him. Uh, I'd only had five points, you know? I understand, though, he was minus five. No, Tiger Williams, <laughs> true, Tiger Williams, true story, and we get on him. I love Tiger. He's a good friend of mine. But the score was 11-4. Tiger was minus two that night. He was on for two against the none four, so we rub it in a little bit. Borey was a plus player that night. I'm pretty sure he was. What we're going to do, folks, we're going to take one more question. And I'm going to get the guys to come up and stand up here. So get your phones ready, and you can get some nice pictures of everybody and get a nice photo op with these guys as well. Uh, Lauren, I think you have the final question, and you're up there. Yep. Thank you. I'm sitting up here with Lucas from Milton. This is his second fan fest, and his question is for Sundin. Um, What was the most memorable goal you've ever scored? Most memorable goal that he ever scored? Yes. Most memorable goal you ever scored, Matt. We'll yeah, take one more question. I think we've got Sam. Yeah, and I think it was, uh, we talked about the playoffs, but we, we were down, uh, we were down a goal here at the end of the, of the conference final against Carolina, almost being eliminated, and we, we scored with, I think, 15 or 17 seconds left at the end of the third period, and I scored uh, that goal. That's probably the, the goal that sticks out as, as the best memory, and the, you can almost feel the roof of the Air Canada Center lifting at, the, at that point. So that's a great memory that I have that sticks out. Sam, you have the last question. Yep, and the question is more of a topic of discussion. Rob here wants to ask Matt, Boria, Daryl, Johnny about a quick, quick topic. Yes, first of all, I want to congratulate you all. Well deserved for the uh, Legends row. But, uh, how uh, the game has changed and evol uh, evolutionized over the years. How would, it, how would it be back when you were playing? How would you guys think it would change the way it was played? That's a good question. Uh, it, it obviously has changed, John, a lot from the way you guys played. And you can watch some of the old film. Uh, as soon as the puck went to the boards and was frozen a little bit, the whistle went, we faced off. Now, 
It's 20 seconds of scrum and hack, whack, and slash, and get it going. That's right, yeah. I'd like to say something about Mr. Ballard, too, you know, the way he was treated me. Actually, uh, <laughs> I was negotiating my contract once with him, and uh, I said to him, gosh, we won the Stanley Cup, Mr. Ballard. And I says, uh, you know, I have to get a raise. I says, uh, got children today, pay the rent and everything else. And he says to me, he says, is that right? I says, yeah. He says, how much do you want? I says, I'd like a $10,000 raise. And he says, $10,000 raise. He says, you know, you're 35 years of age. You were lucky to be here. I felt like saying you're lucky to have me. But I, did, <laughs> but I didn't have enough nerve to say that to him. But he did a lot. I mean, I can only speak the way a man treated me. And, and when my wife had problems, uh, cancer, she, he sent a limo to the house all the time to take her. And he said, look, you just worry about playing hockey, and the guy will take care of him that. And I admired him for that. And uh, sure, like Daryl said, he was uh, very, very good. Money-wise, no, for me. But he was very, very good uh, with a, uh, for charity. I mean, he did anything for charity. Daryl, let's talk about that, uh, how the game has changed for you that you've seen. Oh, well, I came in. I was a draft pick in 70, so I was fortunate to play on a Leaf team that the guys had won Stanley Cup. So there was Dave Keon there, Bobby Bond, although George Armstrong, a great captain. So I learned quite quickly the importance of the history and the tradition and the respect for the organization. So I was fortunate. We didn't get paid much. Like my first year, I played 78 games and got 15,000 bucks. I almost get that for old timers hockey now, believe it or not. But, uh, but it's, it's been crazy that way. And then what happened, the world hockey came on the scene, so the salaries went up a little bit. But the difference between the game now, not that we weren't in shape there, it's a, it's a year-round thing. The kids are trained uh, totally differently, a defensive style plays, all those sorts of things, all the way going through uh, into the National Hockey League. The guys are bigger, stronger, faster, quicker, all those sorts of things, entertaining to watch. Not as many fights, so it's changed in that way. There's been a lot of, obviously, pluses also, but I think it's a great game. The thing that I like most about the NHL every year, there's so many young, key, exciting players coming into it. And we got this World Cup coming up, and you talk about the 23. Sorry, John, I'm going to hit you. I didn't talk with my hands. He's getting nervous. But uh, that team is going to be exciting because you got the Connor McDavid's and the young guys of the world. And to me, as fans, we love seeing that young, talented, skilled playing in the National Hockey League. Warrior, how has the game changed, do you think, from when you played? Today? Uh, <clears throat> I, I think it's uh, National Hockey League. When I came in, it was just like Canadian way, you know, dump the puck in and it was all the fighting and all the stuff. But today, I think, with the European players coming in, and I think they changed the, the game so much to the better, I think, you know. And, uh, of course, the, the ice surface is sort of smaller over here, but it's, it's, it's so much better. I think the hockey is better now with all the tougher, you know, it's not easy. You know, you don't get just two minutes, you know, when you do anything here. You, you know, you've got to play hockey here or else you're suspended. So I think the hockey is so much better here now. Matt, you're the newest uh, to leave, I yep. suppose. How, has it changed much yep. since you left? Oh, definitely, and it's changed a lot since I, from when I started until I ended my career as well. The game is, is changed from a clutch and grab, you know, I think the league has done a great job to get rid of the uh, hooking and holding and slowing down the best players, stopping the stars from being able to score, skate, pass, and show their talent. And the league is constantly trying to work to give the stars room to perform and show their skills. And I think it's continued after I retired, and you see, um, I mean, the speed of the game is faster now. And just like Daryl said, the, the, the pace of the game is better. And you see even more skilled players right through the whole lineup now, where when I broke in, and even at, at, at the end when I played, you have one, a, a second and a first line. But now you need the third line and the fourth line on the good teams. They can also score. They can pass. They can shoot. It's just not enough to be a... They're also role players, but all that need to have more of a, be more of a, a complete hockey player right through the whole lineup. So that's a big change, I think. 